Welcome to the first sewing video in my Arcadian Shepherdess series. My plan is to build from the base up, so we're starting with the chemise. I have previously made a few underdresses and shifts for other projects, but not quite the sort of thing I need for this one. A shape and ruffle delight using non-stretch fabric, in this case a light cotton bois. I used American Duchess's Simplicity 8162 18th century underpinning sewing pattern for this project. I did vary it slightly by adding an extra ruffle along the bottom edge. We start by cutting out the pattern pieces so that we can use them to cut out the actual pieces. We have the front, the back, the neck ruffle, the neck facing, the sleeve, the sleeve gusset, and a sleeve ruffle. Laying out the cotton voile on the fold, you see me here using pattern weights to weigh down the pattern for the back as well as the ruffle. I'm cutting out the back with a little bit of extra room just to be sure, and then cutting out the ruffle. Not shown here, the front is cut out in the same manner as the back. Moving on to the facing piece, which is cut on the bias, as well as the sleeve and sleeve ruffle. Before I start the real construction of the garment, I do some stay stitching around the neckline. Stay stitching stops the fabric from moving around and stretching when you're handling it. So firstly, I stitched around the back. And then I repeated the process on the front half, stitching around the neckline of the front. Next, I pinned the shoulders together on each side, back to front. And then joined the shoulders using the overlocker. So one benefit of using an overlocker is it then means the seam is fully contained and you don't need to do any other finishing. So it not only sews the seam, but keeps it all nice and neat. As these seams are not the final seams, I just tie them off so they doesn't fray, as opposed to doing any real finishing. So now both bits are joined at the shoulder and we have stay stitching around the neck. Next, we join together the individual pieces of the neck ruffle so that it becomes one big loop. Once the seams have been joined on the overlocker, we then top stitch them down on the sewing machine so that they sit nice and flat. Then, in this big giant loop, I stitch along four millimeter lines for gathering. So here you can see it all going round and round and round. Once the first line of gathering stitches is complete, I do a second line that's parallel to them. Once 
once the gather lines are prepared, we now deal with the other side. And to hem, I'm using the rolled hem on the overlocker. So this is the machine version of a rolled hem. Uh, I have to have right side of the fabric up because the machine rolls the fabric down. Uh, and I realized that actually I probably shouldn't have sewn my pieces together as doing the rolled hem couldn't actually go through where the seams were connected. But oh well, we all make mistakes. And apart from that little issue, I'm really happy with how the little rolled edges look. And then as this is the finished bottom edge of the neck ruffle, I use a needle to thread in the loose ends. I then pinned and top stitched those sections over the seams where I wasn't able to use the rolled edge. So on the left, we can see the main body of the chemise, the front and the back that are stitched together at the shoulders. And on the right is the ruffle. I gathered up the ruffle using those gathering lines we put in. Trying to get it down to the size of the neckline. And then pinning it to the chemise. and letting the floof begin. We are now stitching down the neck ruffle onto the neckline of the chemise using a two millimeter stitch. It is getting a little bit cumbersome and hard to wrangle at this stage. Back at the pinning board, I attach the neck facing over the ruffle. So we're putting right sides together, pinning it along. and just working all the way around. And there we are, all pinned. Next is, you guessed it, sewing it on. So this neck facing is not only going to 
encase the seam of both the ruffle and the neck of the, of the chemise, but also be the channel that the drawstring goes through so that we're able to pull it all nice and tight or to whatever size we want. So now the facing is attached on one side to the neck and the ruffle. And what we need to do is pin it down, uh, fold it over and pin it down with the edge tucked underneath so that everything is nice and secured inside. and then stitch that down as well. So it's starting to actually look a bit garmenty. Yeah, pretty ruffles going on every, everywhere, not just crazy, crazy floof. Well, okay, it's still quite crazy floof. So you can see the line being sewn down creating a nice channel for the neck drawstring to go to. Then, to get that ribbon into the channel, put a safety pin through one end to give you something to group in and feed that through all the way around. Although I realized I'd actually put the wrong ribbon in, but that's okay. It's easy enough to attach the correct ribbon to the end and just pull it all through. Progress review time. Here we can see the chemise on Madame, my dummy. The front and the back is together and the neckline is all done. Overall, we're about halfway through. And while it's not in the pattern, I have decided to add a ruffle along the bottom edge. I want the ruffle to be six inches wide, and as I want four pieces in it, I cut 24 inches across my fabric. make the cutting out easier, I fold them over so that I'm going to minimise how many times I cut through. Straightening up the edges and cutting each section of the ruffle. Next, let's deal with more of these edges. Going back to the machine rolled hem. Doing both the long pieces of the bottom ruffle. Yes, this time I've learnt and I'm not joining them up first. And then I also did the edges of the sleeve ruffles as well. Now that all the edging is done, I'm converting the overlocker back to its cutting mode. So putting in the extra needle and putting the blade up. Threading the needle. Next, I join all four of those bottom ruffle pieces together so that it makes one big loop, taking care that it doesn't have any twists in it. And 
and taking a look at what we've just done, at the top we have the sleeve ruffles. So they each have a rolled edge. Then down below, the big long bottom ruffle. Also with its lovely long rolled edge and all four panels are joined together. Now we can assemble the sleeves. The sleeve gussets are pinned onto the sleeves. And I used the pattern pieces just to check the alignment of how things are meant to be. Then we use the overlocker to join the gussets onto the sleeve, being careful to go very slowly even though this is sped up and make sure we do not get any pins under the overlocker. So there we have sleeves with gussets. Back to the ruffles. It's time to put the gathering stitches along the top edges of both the sleeve ruffles as well as the big bottom ruffle. Firstly, I put one line of stitching in and then a second line parallel to it. Then you pull on the two threads to bring in the gather of the sleeve ruffle, getting it to the right size for the sleeve. Nice and even and pinning it on. This is then repeated for the second sleeve ruffle. Then the sleeve ruffles are sewn down on the sewing machine. So we're joining the ruffled, the gathered ruffle onto the flat sleeve. And then, being nice and attached and with the pins all gone, it's very quick to overlock the two, adding another two lines of stitching to keep it secure and bind the edge. So from the outside, nice and neat. The main body of the chemise is laid out open and the sleeve with the gussets on either side is pinned to the main body. This can then be overlocked together. And the procedure is repeated on the other side. So we're getting a bit of a, a big plus side forming with the back, the front and the two sides of the sleeves.
and back to the overlocker to join that second sleeve on. And now the time has come to join the sides together. So the chemise is wrong sides out and we're pinning from the cuff of the sleeve, then the ruffle, and then all the way along the sleeve and the gusset and then down the side. This is then joined together at the overlocker. And then that process is repeated again on the other side. Okay, we're so close now. Time for more of that gathering the ruffle, which you're probably quite familiar with. This time on the quite long bottom ruffle, and it does take a fair bit of time to bring it all in and bring in each quarter to meet a quarter of the chemise bottom edge length. Once it is all down to about the right size, it's time to lay it onto the chemise. And because I have the ruffle, I don't want the chemise the full length that we cut it out to. So I'm placing it up above the edge of the cut of the fabric. continuing round, pinning all the way along. And once again, that same ruffly process sewing down the ruffle onto the chemise at the sewing machine. And then Going in from the edge and there we are, now binding that seam that we just did on the sewing machine on the overlocker, going all the way around the bottom of the chemise. So here we are. I'm very happy with my new chemise. Fits quite well, although I don't know if I did need to add in all that extra room. But it comes in at the neckline, so it doesn't matter. Thank you for watching this first step in my Arcadian Shepherdess project. I hope you'll join me next time when I move on to the stays.